Smile and learn. Hey friends. Today we're going to learn about another system of the human body, the female reproductive system and the male reproductive system. Do you remember what the three vital functions were? Exactly. Nutrition, interaction, and reproduction. Today we'll focus on reproduction. It's the biological process that ensures a species is maintained through the birth of new human beings. What system do you think performs this function? I just told you. Very good, the reproductive system. As human beings grow older, our sexual characteristics become more and more differentiated. This process begins at puberty, when we develop the secondary sexual characteristics that differentiate females and males physically. The reproductive system can be female or male depending on whether it's a female or male body. Let's start with the female reproductive system. The main components of the female reproductive system are the ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus, vagina, and vulva. Let's take a closer look. Ovaries. The ovaries are these small, almond-shaped organs responsible for producing the female sex cells, called eggs. Fallopian tubes. The fallopian tubes are tubes responsible for connecting the ovaries with the uterus, allowing them to transport eggs. Uterus. The uterus is a hollow organ where the fetus develops during pregnancy. It's very muscular since it has the ability to expand as the fetus grows, and later it helps push the fetus out during delivery. Vagina The vagina is a canal that connects the uterus that opens outside the body. This is the passageway where sperm cells enter and where the baby comes out when giving birth. Vulva. The vulva is made up of external organs of the female reproductive system. The vulva is mainly responsible for protecting the openings from damage by the exterior. How interesting. Now we'll move on to learn about the male reproductive system. The main components of the male reproductive system are the penis, urethra, testicles, vas deferens, seminal vesicle, and the prostate. Let's find out what each one is for. Penis. The penis consists of two parts, the shaft and the glands penis, and it has an opening where semen and urine exit outside the body called the urethra. Urethra. The urethra is an organ shared by the excretory and reproductive system. This is where urine is expelled, but it also allows spermatozoa, among other things, to be expelled outside the body. Testicles. The testicles are oval shaped and are responsible for making and storing millions of spermatozoa. Vas deferens. The vas deferens is responsible for connecting the testicles to the urethra. Seminal vesicle. The seminal vesicle is responsible for producing most of the seminal fluid, which nourishes sperm. Prostate. Its function is to produce the rest of the seminal fluid. Have you seen how interesting the male and female reproductive systems are? See you soon! Here's a riddle, Smiley. What is it that all living beings have gone through and that none of us can remember? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
I know this one! Our birth! Very good! It's fascinating how we go from being a microscopic thing to a person. Or, well, seals like you! <laughs> Today we're going to learn how human life begins. To understand this, we need to talk about the three stages of human reproduction. Fertilization, pregnancy, and birth. Let me tell you about all of them. Fertilization. It all begins when a sperm from the man's body joins with an egg from the woman's body. This union is called fertilization and takes place in the woman's reproductive system. For this to happen, sexual intercourse must take place. This is when the man's body expels millions of sperm cells through semen. Only one sperm cell will manage to penetrate the egg's membrane. One in a million! Incredible, isn't it? And before reaching the egg, the sperm must complete a great challenge. First, it passes through the vagina, then the uterus, and finally it reaches the fallopian tubes where the egg is. When the sperm enters the egg, the zygote forms. The zygote is a cell that has all the information necessary to create a new human being. It must travel to the wall of the uterus to implant itself, which is why this process is called implantation. All of this happens in less than a week. Pregnancy. When the zygote implants itself in the uterus, the second stage of reproduction begins. It lasts approximately 40 weeks, or about 9 months. During the pregnancy, the human being gradually forms inside the mother. The first thing that happens is that the zygote begins to divide. The number of cells increases and becomes an embryo. So many changes, right? Well, they've only just begun. Let's look at the development of pregnancy by trimester. First trimester. During the first trimester, the arms, legs, and main organs grow. At eight weeks, the embryo is called a fetus and is about four inches long. To give you an idea, at this point, it's about the size of a pear. Second trimester. In the second trimester, the fetus can move Nerve reflexes appear, and we can identify the sex, or if it's a boy or a girl. It can be up to 11 inches long, almost like a large eggplant. Third trimester. In the last trimester, the fetus grows very quickly as it prepares for birth. It can be up to 20 inches long and weigh around 6 pounds. Do you know how the fetus gets food during pregnancy? Nope, not through the mouth, not yet. It gets nutrition through the placenta. The placenta is responsible for transporting nutrients and oxygen to the baby through the mother's blood. 
It is a vital organ as it keeps the fetus alive until birth. The placenta is connected to the fetus by a tube called the umbilical cord. When the baby is born, the cord is cut and a small scar remains on the newborn. Can you guess what that scar is? Of course, it's the belly button. I'm sure you already knew that. Birth. The last stage of reproduction is birth. Birth begins when the fetus is about to be born. The mother begins to feel movements inside her body called contractions, which push the baby out through the vagina. Not all babies are born vaginally. In some cases, because of complications, they may be delivered by C-section, an operation that involves making an incision in the mother's abdominal wall to remove the baby. Now you know how human life begins. From a tiny cell to a baby ready to be born. It takes more than nine months of teamwork between the mother and the baby. Oh wow, what's this strange cell? It's a zygote. Don't you remember? This is the cell that is created when a sperm fertilizes an egg. And it's where we can find all the information necessary to create a new human being. Half of that information comes from one parent and half from the other parent. It's 50-50. Later on, this zygote will become a baby. In humans, this process usually takes nine months. During that time, many different things happen in the womb. So we divide the process into trimesters. Let's take a closer look. First trimester. In the first three months, something amazing happens. The zygote becomes an embryo and then a fetus. It happens fast. In this stage, the future baby's main organs form, such as the heart, brain, and other important parts, like the spine. Starting in week five, the embryo already has a shape similar to a human being. In week six, the eyes, arms, and legs begin to form, but they're still very small. In week eight, it becomes a fetus meaning that its main organs have already formed and now they will continue to grow and mature. The fetus only measures about an inch, but it already has fingers. It will continue to grow in the coming weeks, but in this first trimester, it only grows about as big as a pear. Did you know that its tiny heart beats more than 160 times per minute? much faster than an adult's, almost twice as fast. Second trimester. In the second trimester, the fetus grows quite a bit. It can reach a length of about 11 inches. And that's when we can find out the sex of the fetus. At this stage, the fetus moves a lot and may even have hiccups. The mother can feel all these movements because the fetus is bigger and its bones are forming, although they're still very soft at first. In addition, the fetus can make gestures, move its head and suck its thumb. From week 18, it can hear sounds from outside, such as its parents' voices or music. During this trimester, the sense of smell begins to develop. Although the fetus still can't use its nose, I'm afraid it will have to wait until it's born to smell these delicious freshly baked cookies. Did you know that in the second trimester, the fetus already has defined fingerprints? 
And as you probably already know, they're unique. If it commits a crime, we'll catch it in an instant. <laughs> Third trimester. In the last three months, the fetus finishes maturing and prepares for life outside the womb. At this stage, it begins to open and close its eyes. It also learns to swallow and suck as practice for feeding after birth. Since it won't have this magical umbilical cord connecting it to all the nutrients from the placenta and its mother anymore. Its lungs develop and prepare to breathe air for the first time. Did you know that babies in the womb sleep like us? Some even believe they can dream. I wonder what goes through their minds. Now it has less and less space but continues to move and stretch. By week 38, it has about 300 bones, although some will later fuse together, leaving only 206. Finally, in those last few weeks, it should position itself head down, preparing for birth. It's ready to come out. By this time, it weighs about six pounds. Although the world record was set by a baby who weighed around 22 pounds at birth, doctors still can't explain how it was possible. And so, from a single cell, a human being is formed. Now you know what happens month by month inside the womb. See you next time! We've learned so much in just one video. Did you know there are many more videos? Imagine how much you could learn. Subscribe to the Smile and Learn educational channel to learn and have fun at the same time.